Hello. Today we're in Bath, or Bath, depending on where you come from. Yeah. Uh, we're paying a visit to the Roman Bath, so we'll take you along with us. Yeah. We're just about to go into the Roman Baths. So we've got, uh, we paid for our tickets online, um, and you've got a 15 minute entry window. So ours is 11 to 11.15 and it's 5 to 11. So we're just having a wander down now just to see where we get in. So this is us, 11 to 11.15. So as you're going round, you get given one of these, these audio guides, which are really good. And then on the information plaques that you can see in front, just like this one, you have a, a number. So all you do is you key the number in to the audio guide and it gives you a description of the area that you're in. There's also some special ones, particularly for children. Um, also the um, author and comedian, Bill Bryson has done um, some special commentaries as well um, and then there's commentaries about the archaeological dig and then this particular one um, is all about the statues that you can see here so the statue there the one in the distance that you can see is actually Julius Caesar but these are the um, statues of the emperors and governors that had particular connections um, and one of them but I don't know if we can see H which is that guy just over there is Hadrian of Hadrian's Wall fame um, but this isn't this area isn't only about all the famous people that use the baths It's also about the lives of the everyday Romans that use the baths and we'll find out a bit more about that as we go around So we've just been listening to the first of the Bill Bryson um, Commentaries as to say Bill was not a comedian. He was a his, he's a historian um, I'm probably getting Bill Bryson and Bill Bailey confused. Um, yeah, so he's a historian and a writer um, and we was just talking about the fact that you've got a real mix of the um, of medieval and Roman um, and kind of more modern architecture but the one thing he's just said that's absolutely totally blown my mind is that the water that's in the bath below which has come from the, the spring um, in Bath this water is possibly as old as 10,000 years old, so it makes the Romans really young because this is potentially rainwater that fell on the Mendips that's percolated through the rocks and then come up into the, the baths as part of the spring. So that's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it, um, that the water down below us could be 10,000 years old. I mean, that's just amazing. So you're currently looking at the only thermal spring in the United Kingdom. Which is amazing. <laughs> As you say, it comes up from the ground, apparently it's at a temperature of 40, 60 degrees centigrade. And you may be able to make out the bubbles in the water. That's just gases escaping. 
So we've just come to the first of the indoor exhibits and we're starting to learn a little bit more about what life was like for the normal Romans and what the baths were used for. And it was more than just the hot springs. I mean, obviously the hot springs and the bathing was important, but it was also a temple. It was a place um, that, that people came to worship. It was also really quite a social space as well. So it was where people from all walks of life would, would come and meet. Um, and, and also come for their spa treatments, so you might come for a spa day. But it just shows it wasn't all just about the actual baths itself, it was a real hub of the community, I suppose. So the stone on the wall that you can see is dated 76 AD, um, which was in the period of time of the Emperor Vespasian. So the Roman baths were definitely here. Um, prior to 76 AD, so 75 AD. So this is a model of the site as it was at the time. So the domed building that you can see there, that's the actual baths itself. And it covered, as I've just learned, the size of a football pitch, which is quite amazing. And then on this side here, so this section here, is the actual temple itself. Um, so obviously where people came to worship. And the altar unusually was on the outside of the temple, not on the inside. And then this round building here, this is called the Tholus. And apparently this is one of the only example in the UK. So it's very, very unusual. So this is quite a remarkable carving um, that was from the front of the temple um, and the fact that it survived all of these years is quite mind-blowing. Um, they believe it was carved by Celtic carvers um, and it looked down on the courtyard from about 15 metres up and it was previously supported by um, four columns. So this section now is all about the temple and about worship. Um, I've also learned we need to stop calling it Bath and start calling it Aquasulis because that was what this area was called. And the Roman, the Empress um, that they um, worshipped or the god was called Sulis Minerva. But the, the religious life I think was quite important in the, the temple. Was, was quite important, but I think it's quite mind-blowing that all of these carvings and so on are 2,000 years old and are still here. Um, and here's a bit of a god that's not quite 2,000 years old. So this is actually the golden head from the statue of the goddess Sulis Minerva. Um, it was found in the 18th century by some workmen who were digging sewers in the street outside. Um, but this used to be in the um, temple itself and would have had candles lit around it every night and be tended by the, um, the, the holy people or the religious people. Um, so it's quite remarkable. So this is really interesting. So in the 1970s, they um, excavated um, some of these artifacts, which are basically notes that have been written and left at the altar for the gods. Um, and they're usually curses. Um, that have been written um, about thieves or people that have stolen items. Um, you've got things like, um, you might have a list of suspects um, and basically you're asking the, the goddess to um, get revenge for you on the person that's stolen your plowshare or bronze pot or tunic. Um, 
Hannah is a big fan of horrible histories and, and she was telling me that at Roman baths they um, people who were, who were taking of the, the, the waters in the baths would pay um, people, often children, to um, look after their clothes while they were in the baths because clothes often got stolen. <laughs> um, and it was a very common crime that clothes were stolen from people who were taking the water. So this is the overflow from the sacred spring um, and I'm hoping that you can hear me over the sound of the water but you might, it might not come out on the film but I don't know if you can see the steam um, if you put your hand out here it, you really feel the warmth that's coming from that water it's quite astounding to be honest it's really warm um, as I say put your hand out there and it's incredibly warm have an exit through the gift shop this is a halfway round gift shop so we're now going to go outside to the actual great bath itself so you, you saw us up before um, up on the um, the balcony above so we were up there where the statues are but this is actually down at ground level and the actual great bath itself There you go. So if you're a Roman, this is where you'd be coming to take your bath. It's uh, quite uneven underfoot, so I need to be careful where I stand. Oh yeah, there's Hannah, say hello. It's a very rare glimpse of the lesser spotted Hannah. Yeah, here's the baths. So you can look up and you can see all the, the statues of the nobility that I was talking about when we were up top. And here actually down at ground level. The 10,000 year old water. just to give you an idea of the scale. I don't know if you can see over on the far side, there's a couple of um, Romans, real life Romans, um, who are dispensing advice about where you can go and get changed to take the water and which baths you can use. It's, uh, it's really good and they're very well in character. But yeah, as you can see, it's, it's, it's busy. But it's quite a remarkable place. And the fact, you know, that it's been here for 2,000 years, astounding. So we just sat by the edge of the great pool, great bath rather, just kind of taking it in. Um, over on the far side, just there is where the water comes in and it's constantly flowing. The water itself is warm and you can feel a little bit of warmth coming off it. But, you know, it, it, you know that, that joke, whatever did the Romans do for us? Well, the fact that the Romans could build this, they built saunas. Um, as, as the audio commentaries just said, this was like the leisure centre of its time. You know, in this pool here, you'd have had people swimming, people just stood around talking. Um, it would have been an, a, a noisy place because, you know, you might be shouting to your mate that's on the other side or, you know, we think it's busy today, but there's nothing compared to uh, how it would have been back then. It was an important place, not only for relaxation, but also for trade, a bit like the kind of modern day golf course, um, you know, where business deals are struck. Um, 
and you could or if you either take the water or you could just sit in one of the alcoves and you know relax but uh, yeah it's, very, it's just nice just sat here and chilling and watching the world go by so i was just saying a minute ago about the fact that the the roman baths were the roman equivalent of the leisure center well we're just going into the gym so i don't know if you can see but this is the gym and then on the wall you've got some uh, um, projections of romans doing gym type stuff So maybe the Romans weren't that different to us. Karen's about to brave the spy water. Well, it's supposed to be a cure all for everything, so. Yeah. It's warm. It tastes like metallic. Yeah. I can't be saying I'll be having it. But uh, there you go. Cheers. Well, that's it for our day in Bath. Yeah, fantastic trip around the Roman Baths. Yeah, we really enjoyed it, learnt an awful lot. It was, it doesn't look like it's going to be that amazing from the outside. And Paul kept saying, it's really good, it's really good. And trust me, it is really good. Yeah. Our advice is definitely book in advance. Um, it was really busy today. Um, and there was obviously queues outside, but as you would have seen, you'd go in in kind of like your time order. Yep. It was well organised. Um, and the audio guides were great. Um, yeah, full of information. Yeah. Uh, a good couple of hours to do the whole tour. Yeah, and that wasn't rushing, that no. was just, you know, taking, it, taking easy. it easy. So, thank you very much for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. And we'll see you Can next you time. Bye.